one of my favorite people here with us. This is Bridget Trong. She is a TV host, content creator, and amazing woman. Oh, thank you. I'm my so pleasure. happy to be a part of this. Thank Thanks you. for having me. My pleasure. So um, for those that don't know who you are, can you just quickly describe what you yeah. do as this driving artist? My name is Bridget Trong. I'm a television host, producer, I'm a digital content creator, and I also own a production company with my partners called Coyote Media. Amazing. Yeah. So uh, this show is called Striving Artists because, like yourself, there's other artists that want to get rid of that whole stigma of being a starving artist. What is something like? What is something that will that helped you start your career, start your your journey into becoming a TV host, um, content creator, full time? I always wanted to tell stories, and I, I think, you know, you've probably heard that before in one okay. shape or form and, or another, um, and I think from an early age, I was always writing, I was always talking to people, I was always watching entertainment shows. That's actually how my mom learned English. What? Yeah, when she came to Canada from Vietnam, she watched entertainment news shows all the time, and so that's what I grew up around, and so, because I always had a natural fascination with people, entertainment, writing, telling stories. I just kind of honed in on all of that and decided to run with it. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, talk to us about what I know. Like as a creator, your your days are all different. Yeah. But there's something that cons that's constant, which is creating. Um, we're actually here. You said that this is one of the places that you frequent at. I come here a lot. Little Nikki's yeah. Coffee, which is really close to my home. They both serve as my offices. I like to switch it up. Right. But yeah, as, um, as an entrepreneur, as creatives, um, I, I think it's natural for us to want to explore where we live and find little pieces of in inspiration. For sure, yeah. um, and Little Nikki, even though it is a coffee shop, I don't know. It's something contextually about it that feels right. And whenever I'm there, I, they make amazing vignettes. If you guys are a fan of desserts, I'm telling you. I wish it was open right now so we can indulge in some. Um, I'll go in there, sit down with a coffee, order some vignettes, and I just start writing or start editing. And I think it's just the vibe. And I think with most creatives, you kind of just you pick up on little things around you. Sure, yeah. It's sometimes hard to explain and it's different for everyone, but right. contextually, this kind of little neighborhood in Toronto serves me right. Cool. Yeah. So um, I want to know about your very first hosting experience. Okay. The first hosting experience I ever had was uh, for a short film channel called Moviola. Okay. Yeah, so Moviola was known for all of its short films and their show was called Moviola Live. So my very first hosting experience was actually live television three times a week. Whoa. I know, I know. Can you imagine? Um, somehow the producers had faith in me and um, I remember my very first show, I was so nervous. I don't even remember what came out of my mouth, but I just ran with it. and. Um, it, you kind of evolve from there and being on live television is like a task in and of itself. Yep. It is. You have to think really quickly on your feet and that's what it taught me to do and um, that kind of led me to other opportunities like Rogers Television right. where I met you and interviewed you exactly. on yeah. our morning talk show um, and it kind of grew from there. So um, it was a really, really unique experience. I don't think that um, you know a lot of people have that opportunity at the very beginning of their career and it was super terrifying but it taught me a ton a ton nice. yeah and then do you remember the instance when you decided hey this is this is actually something I can make a living off of you know what and I don't know I'd love to hear your opinion on this um, I never thought about really the idea of cashing in on what I was doing does that make sense? Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I do now because I'm an adult, right. but when I started like 11 years ago, I was 19, and I just remembered thinking, these are things I'm really good at, this is something I really wanna do, and this is something I can see myself doing well in, I'm just right. gonna do it. But I never, I never, there was never a moment where I thought, oh my God, this could be like a long-term career. Oh, Maybe great. until about, I wanna say, when I was 25, 24, 25, and right. that's when um, the watch list 
on CHCH launched. Yep. Um, that has since rebranded recently into Ann Pop, which is the pop culture show on television. But it wasn't until the watch list where I thought, huh, this could be a viable career. But for a really long time, I, I just, I was like, I love doing this. I just want to hopefully make a life out of it. But I didn't think like, money and then living and surviving, if right. that makes sense. No, it does, yeah. totally, because I'm sure that there's a lot of creators out there that are like, oh, this is, pro this is I could do this on the side, totally. or they fall into it out of necessity, or they are like, oh, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Everyone has their own journey, Yeah. and what's interesting to find out about you and the other artists that we'll be talking to is how they got to it, how they, how they ended up where they are now. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's striving artists, and I love that term striving, is that you always strive A to be your best, but also you strive to keep your head above water. Right. Right? And so uh, I think that's what I was doing for a really long time, and sometimes I still do that when yeah. there are challenges that come up. Um, but you just, you just try to keep doing it. You, cut, you, you keep doing it until someone hears your stuff or sees your stuff and believes in what you're doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just a quick question before we go. Um, you, you've, um, got to interview a lot of incredible actors and, yeah. and famous people. Like, it's been really fun. Um, just just so that they know, like, if you can name like a few of your favorites. Oh my gosh. Okay. You probably have all of them as your favorites. <laughs> that is not true. That is not. I'm not, I'm not going to name my least favorites. No, no, no. Um, my favorite, okay, so my absolute favorite interview of all time was with Daniel Radcliffe. Oh my gosh. Daniel Radcliffe is one of the most humble, personable people you'll ever come across right. and um, he was in town promoting the F word which was this romantic comedy yeah. uh, and he, it's amazing but I just remember you do a lot of junket style interviews where you walk in as you know a reporter and the actors are already there sitting yeah. down waiting for you to come and ask them their, your questions right. and it's usually a hello you sit down you do your thing yeah. he was one of the only actors I've ever interviewed where he actually got up walked over to me at the door shook my hand and introduced himself as hi i'm daniel and i just wow. thought wow like here's a striving artist right in front right. of me like literally sure. um so he's definitely one of my all-time favorites alice cooper was in town uh promoting his documentary at hot docs a few years ago right. and um again so personable so cool yeah. um and christopher Plummer was really neat as well cool. canadian icon um and my other two, Susan Sarandon, so amazing. Um, just to have like this iconic stature sitting in front of you, right. um, really down to earth. She was amazing. And uh, I kind of fangirled a bit when I interviewed Drew Barrymore. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't, I didn't show her because I wanted to play it cool. For sure, yeah. Um, but oh my gosh, I grew up watching her and I'm sure you did as Definitely, well. Yeah. And she was so goofy really fun to chat with and she had like this really charismatic vibe to her and, which is surprising because this is someone who's been in the spotlight her entire life so it's really neat to come across these you know big success stories this huge icon, these huge icons um, who are just like you and I That's right. it's really refreshing yeah, cool. yeah super cool sweet well after the break we are going to continue to talk with Bridget at her office and we're going to learn more about her, her successes and obstacles and all that stuff, so stay tuned.